So, I like Hassan. I actually have some respect for Hassan. Um, most of the time, I agree with the things that he says. However, I saw something that I didn't like, that I think is wrong, and needs to be criticized. So let's just get into it. So Hassan, he, he says here, this straight up anti-Semitic insanity is sitting at 100K likes, American leaders don't support Israel unconditionally because there are Jewish people among them. They support a U.S. forward operating base in a resource-rich region. Plenty of Jews criticize Israel. Fuck off, idiot. Now, he's referencing this, this right here. Let me see if I can blow this up. Okay, so this image right here, it is showing a bunch of people showing an Israeli flag next to them, which depicts the Star of David, of course, and it's showing their respective positions. So Anthony Blinken is the Secretary of State, for example, and all the rest. And, of course, this is implying, and I should just say, this person uh, shared this tweet. So, what is this tweet implying? The tweet's implying that these people are Zionists. That's what it's implying. Now, you might say, no, it's not implying that. It's implying that these people are Jewish. To which I say, not really. Not really. And there's reasons for why that is. But look. Let's go back to the tweet. If I can find it. Uh. Well, here we go. So, this person says, there's a difference between Israeli Zionist citizen and a Jewish person. And I respond by saying, thank you for this. Son took a really, really bad take here. Now, the reason why I believe this is a really, really bad thing to say. Is because there's a lot of problems with just calling someone anti Semitic for questioning Zionist influence in American media and positions of power, like in the government, but also other positions of power. Now, Zionism is a hateful, racist ideology that tries to assert that land that does not belong to Ashkenazi people, not Jewish people, mind you, Ashkenazi people. It tries to assert that that land does belong to Ashkenazis. Now, you might be thinking, what am I talking about? What is an Ashkenazi? Well, an Ashkenazi is a German. It's an ethnicity. Or more specifically, it's... it's uh, they are Germanic people. Okay. 
and some of them are Jewish, but not necessarily so. Now, the equivocation between Ashkenazis, which are Germanic people, okay? Now, when I said German, German, Germanic, you can have Germanic people that live in lots of different European countries. It doesn't necessarily mean they all live in Germany. They could live in Austria, Czech Republic, they could live in France, they could live in Switzerland, whatever. Okay, but they are part of an ethnic group which they call Germanic. Now there's problems with the word ethnicity, but I'll get into that later. Okay, but what they are not is they are not Semitic people. And this is really important to point out. Okay, and it's the reason why I think I believe Hassan is very wrong for this tweet that he made. Okay. Now, Zionism is actually an Ashkenazi separatist movement. That's actually what it is. Let's bring up this. Now, I do recommend you guys read this whole thing. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Okay, but it's a very, very interesting article. I'll link it in the description. Okay. But basically, if you studied the history of Zionism, you realize that Zionism is actually just an Ashkenazi separatist movement. And the goals of Zionism we're not always clear. Okay. But eventually it came to mean the desire to annex land, Palestine, and transform it into an Ashkenazi ethno state. Now they don't phrase it like this though. Okay. What they phrase it as is they phrase it as Israel being a Jewish state, but it's not actually a Jewish state at all. It's an Ashkenazi ethno state. That's what Israel is. And in order to facilitate the eventual annexation of Palestine, and transform it into an Ashkenazi ethnostate. Zionists had to concoct a series of lies and equivocations in order to help facilitate this. Okay. One of those equivocations was to equivocate the word Ashkenazi with the word Jewish, okay? And that is where the idea that Jewish is an ethnicity came from, okay? Jewish, Jews, Judaism, whatever you want to call it, Jewish is not an ethnicity, okay? Ashkenazi is. Anyone can be Jewish, okay? You can be black and Jewish. You can be Chinese and Jewish. That's a thing, okay? I, I posted it in, in one of my other videos. Uh, I don't even know if I have it up here right now. I think I do. Uh, there, were, there were Chinese Jews. Kaifeng Jews right here. Okay, you can be Chinese and Jewish. You can be black and Jewish. You can be Indian and Jewish. You can be Arab and Jewish. Okay, Arabs were Jews for thousands of years before any white person ever was Jewish. Okay, and that is what Ashkenazis are. So I said they're Germanic, they're Europeans, they're white. That's what they are. They're not from the Middle East, but in order to justify stealing 
land in the Middle East, they had to deceive people into thinking that they are from the Middle East. So one of the deceptions they used was that equivocation. So they first had to equivocate the word Ashkenazi with Jewish. Okay, so in people's minds now, whenever we think of the word Jewish or Jews, we think of a certain type of person with certain physical characteristics, them having, you know, white skin and dark hair or maybe curly hair, you know, whatever. These, uh, these uh, characteristics that we associate with Jews is complete fiction because a Jew can look like anyone. Like I showed you before, they could be Chinese and Jewish. Okay. This is important. Okay. This is very, very important to understand is that there is no physicality associated with being Jewish. In other words, calling Jewish an ethnicity is actually nothing more than a relabeling of race. And in fact, if you study the early history of Zionism, that's what they called it. They called it the Jewish race. They called, uh, they called it a race as opposed to ethnicity. The only reason why they changed the word to ethnicity was because race was debunked as a pseudoscience. Turns out race is just a social construct. But ethnicity in this context is just a relabeling of race. Now, I do know that in anthropology, uh, ethnicity is used very differently there. You know, it has some use there. It's mostly used to study ancient people, okay? okay? But it was never intended to be applied to contemporary people. It was never, ever delineated on genetic grounds. There was no biological aspect to it. Any genetic commonality is assumed to be true, but it was never derived. And there are problems with that assumptions that are completely understood by anthropologists. And that's why they don't apply ethnicity to modern people, because in that context, it really is just a relabeling of race, race pseudoscience. So, Now, the thing about these people is that since there is actually no physicality to being Ashkenazi, Ashkenazis are just Germans. So from the perspective of a white American, they are indistinguishable from any other white American. Okay. They enjoy all the privileges that white Americans have. Now, there are hate crimes committed against people who are religiously Jewish, but whether these people that you're looking at right now are actually religiously Jewish or not isn't really the point. In fact, they probably aren't terribly religious if they are religious at all. You see, in America, there are hate crimes committed against Jews. But these hate crimes are not committed against people like this. In other words, just ordinary, everyday people, white people, white Americans that you encounter every day. Hate crimes are not committed against those people because they don't know that they are supposedly Jewish in the first place. Because like I said, it's not an ethnicity. There's no physicality to it. In order for anyone who hates Jews to commit a crime against them, a hate crime, they would have to somehow know that they are Jewish. So that means that they have to commit hate crimes against people who actually express as Jewish in some other way other than them saying they are. That's the biggest distinction. So in other words, they would have to use, you know, dress a certain way, you know, maybe wear a yarmulke. But not all Jews wear yarmulkes, do they? Some Jews wear 
fedoras. Um, there's other Jewish clothing that's you know associated with different denominations of Judaism. Okay, because that's the other misconception people have is that Jews are a monolith, and they're not. Even among Ashkenazis, they're not. Not all Ashkenazis are Jews, and the ones that are aren't necessarily the same denomination. It's not the same sect, necessarily. Okay? But the hate crimes are committed against people who express as Jewish in some way, either by the clothing that they wear, or perhaps um, them living in uh, Jewish communities where other people are expressing in this way. Um, you know, these kind of tight-knit, highly religious, you know, small communities. And another way they obviously express as Jewish is going to synagogue or going to Jewish temple, whatever it is. Okay, But that's not what these people are doing. Okay? These are just the ordinary, everyday white people. Okay, so how do we know that they're Jewish? I don't see any yarmulkes. I don't see any fedoras. Okay. The people, these people are Ashkenazis. Okay, but the only reason why we even know that they are Jewish, Ashkenazi, whatever, is because they say they are. That's it. But if they never said they were, they wouldn't be. And that's really, really important. Now, we need to go back to what I was talking about before, about how Zionism is really at the core of all these problems, of how it brainwashed people into thinking that Jewish as an ethnicity and how it equivocated between the words Ashkenazi and Jewish. Okay, so why would they lie about this? Well. They had to lie because they needed people to think certain things. And one of those things is they had to think of they had to think of them, Ashkenazis, as a race. Okay? And they had to think of uh, Ashkenazis as something other than Germans or Germanic people. Jews. If you say that they are Jews, then you can get away with more lies. Like, for example, that they're Semitic people. So, I talked about this in another video. The word anti-Semitic was coined by this man named Moritz Steinschneider. And he was a Zionist. He was also a racist. And he believed that Palestine belonged to Ashkenazis. As you can see here, he was born in Austria, lived in the German Empire. He was a German. <clears throat> he was a German. But he believed that a country in the Middle East belongs to him and his fellow German boyos. This is wrong. This is really wrong. Now, he invented a word, anti-Semitism, and the reason why he invented that word was he wanted to equivocate, wanted to do the same thing I was talking about before. He wanted to make people believe that Ashkenazis are Semitic people, but they're not. They're Germanic people, Germans. That's actually what they are. They're just, they're just white people. They're not from the Middle East. But if you lie and you make people believe that you are Semitic, then it lends validity to the claim that you are from the Middle East. And then you can leverage other lies. One of these other lies is that Jews, which remember, in this context, just means Ashkenazis, which just means Germans, are descended from ancient Israelites, which they're not. They're not. Now, I don't want to get into all of that because the video is getting a little bit long, and I kind of wanted to keep this a certain, at a certain level. But I can definitely talk about that more in depth later.
Okay, Ashkenazis, aka Germans, are not descended from ancient Israelites. Ancient Israelites weren't even Jewish, by the way. Okay, I talked about that in another video. They weren't Jews. They weren't even monotheistic. They were polytheistic. That's crazy. That's the thing that they don't tell you, right? They say that Jews are descended from ancient Israelites, but what they don't tell you is that ancient Israelites weren't Jews, and they weren't even monotheistic. Their religion was far more similar to ancient Egyptian religion with multiple gods. And if you look at their artwork, it's very similar to ancient Egyptian artwork as well. They sure as hell weren't white. <laughs> they weren't Germans. <sighs> now look, the reason why I have such a big problem with this, with what he's saying, is because you're providing sucker to a Zionist claim. Look, the reason why we know these people are Ashkenazis, what Hassan and what a lot of people would call Jews, is only because they say they are. And outside of actual religious Jews, people who really believe in the Jewish faith, really the only people who ever say that they're Jewish are Zionists. Now, I'm going to tell you another fact. The Star of David is not a Jewish symbol. It's not. It is actually, you guessed it, an Ashkenazi symbol. I uh, wonder if I have this open already. You know what? I think I, I closed it up. You know, I think I closed it up. But that's okay. Um, we can just look it up. Um, so, the Star of David it says it right here. Unlike the menorah and blah, 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 the hexagram was not originally a uniquely Jewish symbol. So that's what this is, right? This is a star. But most people are familiar with the, the pentagram star. But there's other kinds of stars. So this is a hexagram. So the hexagram was used in so many different cultures throughout human history. Right? So that means that, as it says here, it was not uniquely a Jewish symbol. In fact, it was not a Jewish symbol at all. And it's... Its association with Jewishness came about from Ashkenazis in the Czech Republic. It seemed to have begun in the Czech Republic before the 17th century. Okay. Ashkenazis appear to have begun using this, the hexagram as a symbol you know, in the Czech Republic around the 17th century, but it really only became associated with Jewishness during the Zionist movement, okay? So, the hexagram, aka the Star of David, this is not some ancient Jewish symbol that predates, you know, written history or whatever, no. This dates back to the turn of the century, saying here it only really began to be used around 1897. Okay, it's a Zionist symbol. It's a Zionist symbol. It's not a Jewish symbol. You go back to uh, ancient times, you go to uh, visit some Jews in the Middle East who are not white, and you show them the hexagram <laughs> and say, uh, speak to them in their language, whatever language they might be speaking, which might be Arabic, because, like I said, the vast majority of Jews living in the Middle East prior to 1948 
were Arabs. But um, yeah, if you show them this, they might try to kill you for you know I, blasphemy or something, whatever the hell it is, <laughs> because this is not a Jewish symbol. This is not their symbol because Jews aren't a monolith. Okay, there's so many different sects of Judaism. Even Christianity was originally just a different sect of Judaism. Okay, I got news for you. All Jews are converts. They're not descended from ancient Israelites. They're all converts. Black Jews, Indian Jews, Chinese Jews, Arab Jews, and yes, white Jews, including Ashkenazis, which that's generally what Ashkenazi even means. Shephardic kind of means the same thing, but that's its whole, that's a whole nother story. Um, these are all converts. And Zionism, friggin' Zionism was never, never a Jewish thing. It was always an Ashkenazi thing. So here is a, just a little, little snippet from this book. So we'll just read a little bit here. Zionism claims to be a liberation movement for all Jews. And a Zionist ideology, ideologists have spared no effort in their attempt to make the two terms, Jewish and Zionist, virtually synonymous. In fact, however, Zionism has been primarily a liberation movement for European Jews. Okay, and the rest goes on. Dudes, <laughs> European Jews are just Ashkenazis. So if you want to read more about this, I'll, I'll link this. There's like a whole book. This was uh, published 1988. Shephardism in Israel, Zionism from the standpoint of its Jewish victims. <sighs> now, I said before, the only reason why we even know these people are Jewish is not because they express their Jewishness in an obvious way, unlike actual religious Jews. These guys just say they are Jewish, and the people who are most likely to say they are Jewish in this context, in this way, and make it part of their identity are Zionists. And because of that, it is important to know the Zionist influence in positions of power, especially governmental power, because these are the people who are influencing American foreign policy in regards to Israel, and they are enabling Israel to pursue its Zionist goals which include the annexation of Gaza and the West Bank. And they have been letting Israel get away with horrific war crimes and ethnic cleansing in pursuit of those goals at no end, carte blanche. And this is not a new thing. This has been going on for years. It's only now after the Hamas attack did people start to notice but I've been watching and reading about this for years, and it was enraging me that the mainstream media wasn't saying anything about it. So yes, it is important to know Zionist influence in American politics and the media. Okay, I don't care if you stick the Star of David, a hexagram next to their, their faces. Okay, that's not even a Jewish symbol. That's a Zionist symbol. It always was. You think black Jews, you think uh, Indian Jews, you think Kaifeng Jews use that symbol? Hell no. You think Jews from 2,000 years ago used that symbol? No, they didn't. That's an Ashkenazi thing. That thing they stuck on their flag, that's, that's a Zionist symbol. 
That's for that's for Ashkenazis. Yeah. It's fair to criticize. And what I don't like is I don't like it when people try to chill the free speech of people who are questioning and critiquing this influence in our government and also in the media and anywhere else it might manifest. You know, just the other day I read about how a Zionist, who was, I guess, the former CEO of Victoria's Secret, pulled his, it was the dude was a billionaire, pulled his billionaire funding out of Harvard University because a few Harvard students dared to criticize Israel for the genocidal, maniacal things they've been doing to the Palestinian people. And, you know, the, the sad thing is, is that Hassan knows all of this. He knows that what they're doing. He's actually been one of the best critics of, of Israel this entire time, even better than Jenk. Okay? But I believe what he's doing here is virtue signaling. Because for some stupid reason, he's worried about people thinking he's anti-Semitic, so he needs to do this. Or maybe he's just deluded. Because I used to think this stuff too. I used to think that this stuff was anti-Semitic too. But when you research this stuff, and then you understand the dynamic between what it actually means to be Jewish and how that was equivocated in the history of Zionism, you realize that it's not. Okay? It's important to question Zionist influence in governmental power and the mainstream media. Okay, you want to stick a Star of David next to their faces? There's nothing anti-Semitic about that because, the first of all, we shouldn't even be using the word anti-Semitic anymore. Okay? The fact that we use this word that was coined by a racist Zionist should be the proof that you need that we're brainwashed. We are brainwashed by Zionism because we are using such a strange, bizarre word to refer to racism against Ashkenazis. Remember, it's not racism against Jews. It's not. It's racism against Ashkenazis. I never heard anyone accuse someone of being anti-Semitic against black Jews, Indian Jews, Kaifeng Jews, Arab Jews. And you might say that these Jews are rare, and I would agree, but I've, you would think that something, some, that this would have come up at some point. But it doesn't. Anytime they're talking about anti-Semitism, they're talking about racism against Ashkenazis. But the problem is that all you're doing in this context is giving sucker to the Zionists who consider anti-Zionist anti uh, sentiment to be anti-Semitism. So that's why, personally, whenever I'm talking about racism against Jews, I use the word anti-Jewishness, anti-Jew, something like that. All right, guys. Now, just as a kind of bonus funny funny, um, this is just for fun. This guy, I saw this <laughs> randomly. Uh, this dude is reacting to SS Sniper Wolf. Dude, don't you know she's a, uh, a doxing bitch? A doxing bitch? And that she slandered my ass? Okay, come on, get, get with the program here, dude. All right, I just thought that was funny. It's totally cool, though. I still like Hassan, and I think he can do better. All right, guys. So uh, that's it. See you later.